Trisha and 458 against Gensei and Rabbit. It's gonna be a tag team battle where two players start off playing a 1v1 and the loser is out. And then someone else comes back in. And then whoever loses is out. And then the previous player then comes back in. So like it's not that they're eliminated, it's just that they switch around whenever someone loses. Winner stays and the loser rotates. That's a nice little rhyme. So we got Gensei on the green Zerg, middle right off the map, and 458 are right below him on the pale blue Protoss, bottom left right, bottom right of the map. And he's gonna get found out by Gensei on the very first scouting attempt, and that might just spell some bad news for 458 because Gensei is the kind of player who really likes to cheese. He likes his cheese thick and strong smelly and with a lot of flavor but alas it turns out he's not gonna cheese he's gonna go for a hatchery first because he didn't find 4 of 8 fast enough to change his build order he's only finding him right now he might turn around though to avoid being seen but nope he's gonna go in all the way to the backside and touch bases get his overlord on those minerals and be a little bit annoying so do notice this little detail right here. This is very important. Forve going for Nexus first, but he leaves some space in between. Because he does not want Zerglings from Gensei to get in between the double Nexus. If you don't leave any space like this, Zerglings can walk in between. And they can hit the Nexus. And you cannot protect the Nexus unless you've got cannons. Zealots cannot walk in between two Nexuses that are touching each other. That's why he's got the forge, and then the gateway. Well, Gensei is not cheesing, he's gonna go for just the standard choke build order with probably a couple of hatcheries and maybe a very quick Hydalisk bust attack. That's something he does like to do. Gensei is the kind of player who goes balls to the wall aggressive. He's a risky player. Rarely do I ever see him not take humongous risks. Oftentimes they pay off, and quite about as oftentimes as they pay off, they don't pay off. So it's about a 50-50 situation, you know, 50-50. Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. Or of getting a cannon, getting a cyber core, getting double gasser in the back. He's going for advanced technology. And of course we have Gensei who saw all that happen. He had to run away from the cannon though, but I do think he saw the two assimilators starting and the cyber core coming in. We got Zerglings there from Gensei. We have Sunken in the front building. We had a little bit of laughing from 458. Maybe he killed a drone. No, he did not kill a drone. So yeah, the probe there is going to get found and surrounded and eliminated. Absolutely obliterated. Goodbye, probe. Well, not yet. Sometime soon. It's going to take a little while longer before that probe dies. More importantly... We have another hatchery coming in there for Gensei. The probe has gone down. One sunken there in the front. That's a very cheap choke. But Gensei knows that he doesn't have to invest a lot of minerals into his choke just yet. Because 4 of 8 has a very delayed gateway army coming out. There's one gateway finished up, three more on the way. He's sending a couple of zealots out, but he finds the zerklings and then turns around. And then turns around again because he has to protect that pilot in the front. Probe goes down, Zerglings have already paid for themselves killing two probes, and they're also being very annoying. And he's building more of them. Perhaps a couple too many of them. Perhaps not enough. There's kind of like a point at which you build so many Zerglings that you will do damage. You could have done some damage because you only have one cannon, cannon number two finishing up right now. Yeah, that's about 10 Zerglings. That's a lot of Zerglings and not a lot of drones. But, look at this, only one second in the front. So he's cheaping out on his choke, and instead he's being annoying with Zerglings to buy time to grow a little bit bigger here back at home, where he's got a Hylisk then finished up, and Hylisk's already on the way, getting Hylisk speed, and he's preventing a choke from 458, which is pretty important against Hylisks. And now there's speed. Speed on the Zerglings might give Forve the information he needs to deduce and come to the conclusion that Gensei is going for Hydalisk, because you're already balling up there in the front. 
Corsair is in the air, gonna take down some of those overlords. Zerglings are retreating back home, and they're grouping up with the Hylus, and they're gonna go all in on the attack. And hopefully attack early enough before 4 of 8 has level 1 attack and Zealot Speed finished up. So this is a race against the clock. 4 of 8 has to retreat and preserve his Zealots, prevent them from dying. And Gensei has to keep on attacking non-stop. Kills the Corsair. One Overlord went down. One more spawn, so not supply block. But now he has to wait for more Overlords before he can start producing again. But he's coming in. He's going to take down the Citadel of Dune, which is essential. He has to prevent Zealot speed. So killing that Citadel of Dune is pretty important. But forced to retreat. Forvey buys himself time. Will he buy himself enough time to get that Zealot speed operational? We can't really see the icon, but we can see the progression. So let's just keep that highlighted. It's synced up with level 1 attack for the Zealots. We have range coming in for the Hydras, which will buff and beefen them up a little bit, having more range to attack. The micro is great from both players, actually. Looks like Gensei is gonna have to, you know, snake his way around. And because he's no longer supply block, we now have a lot more Hylisk and Zerfings coming across. Forvade is fighting for his life, and I think he might have just lost the fight for his life. He did finish speed, but that's something he can put in the back, but that's more high levels than he can handle. It's only four hatcheries in total, one sunken. But Gensei, this is, I, I'd say this qualifies as a cheese strategy from Gensei. One sunken in the front into straight up high levels. This counts as a cheese, but oh boy, is it an effective one. This looks like a really strong good strategy from Gensei and 458 here appears to not be adequately equipped at the moment to deal with this cheesy strategy on the low economy from Gensei and he might just have to call GG within the next couple of seconds his army is dying gateways are producing but you know when you have 14 yeah doesn't even call GG just leaves the game he has been humiliated by Gensei is stepping on the gas right from the start with some cheesy Zerg against Protoss strategies. I like seeing it, a Zerg that's completely, you know, ass blasting a Protoss. It just looks so damn good. It's so sexy. Mmm, boy, it's so good to watch. So good to watch. So now we have a little switcheroo. Forvate is out for now. And Trisha is taking his place to set right the wrongs that have been done to Protoss kind by Gensei. So now we have Gensei on the red Terran, Trisha on the green Protoss, middle of the map, here on the top. So 9 o'clock and 12 o'clock spawn locations. Trisha is starting off with probes, because what else do you start with when you're a Protoss? STVs, a pylon? Nah, you need those probes, my friend. Without those probes, we wouldn't be getting too far. He's going for a very early pylon here though. That's a 7-9 pylon. That's very quick. Which of course also means he's gonna go for a 9 gateway. Also very quick. Usually people go for 8, ga uh, eight pylon into 10 gateway, like double gateway on the middle spawn. Or sometimes one gateway on the middle spawn. Or as Gensei is going for barracks, supply depot, barracks, barracks. I assume it's going to be triple barracks here from Gensei. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. Double gateway. Actually, the, you got a second gateway faster than you usually would, which is a very interesting choice. Usually it's one gateway, and then we get two gateways at once when you get 300 minerals, but he went for a gateway, gateway. Pylon. Is he going to get another gateway now, or is he not going to get that third gateway? Very interesting choice here by Trisha. I have not really seen this specific order done like this before. He's going to have a very early Zealot out to attack, but we already have Marines out from Gensei to defend himself, but it's gonna be scouting the map so there's a chance that Trisha will walk into Gensei's base while the Marines are away from home which is some pretty bad news 
So Trisha is scouting the chokes, only the chokes. He's kind of low-balling his scouting, kind of trying to cheap out and try to find Gensei as fast as he can. And he's going to find him because there's a Marine in the front. And now there's a Zealot leaving and a Marine entering. And he's ignoring the Marine. But more Zealots will spawn very soon. Marine's going to hit those probes. We have a probe and a Zealot and another Zealot there arriving in Gensei's base. And the Zealots are going to push the Marines back towards the command center while the Marine here is killing probes. It's getting chased down by two more probes. The Zealots are ignoring the Marine. Kind of surprising that he isn't really protecting his probes with full-on effort. Whereas Gensei is protecting his Marines and SCVs with full-on effort. The Marine is still alive, still walking in circles. I think he has one kill there on that Marine. Two kills. Now we have a little bit of a push here from Trisha, but he is forced to retreat because we do have a good amount of Marines here. So very interesting deviation from what is normal from Trisha. I think he might have just made a mistake. I think he meant to do an 8 pylon, but accidentally did a 7 pylon. Because he's still doing what the normal double gateway, double nexus build order is. He's still doing that exact build order, just the zealot timing and gateway timing was a little bit swapped around, and I think that was by accident. So the probe there are going to kill the marine with some micro this time around, so the marine does go down, no more probe kills happening. One command center there for Gensei, getting an academy. Cannon coming up in the front there from Trisha, he's going to try to prevent the eventual marine medic push that Gensei will try to do. Actually, Gensei is already moving out. He's not even going to wait for the medics or the stim. He's going to try to stop the cannon in the front right here, right now. Will the cannon finish up? I think it will be finished up just in time. And then the Zealots are going to block off the retreat. He's just going to walk right in. Oh, this is a mistake. The Zealots cut off the path for the Marines. So the Marines are split up as these are on the scene. But this did not go too well. Trisha played... Trisha just handled that really well. He cut off the army. He cut it in two. Forced one part of the army to go into the base and forced the other part to retreat. And the attack failed miserably. So now we have a situation where Genze has one command center. But Trisha has double nexus. And he's got advanced technology on the way, a double robot there coming in in the back, and a Citadel of a Dune on the way <coughs> as well. As in the base sees everything, more cannons coming up in the front. Marines are waiting here in the front, and Gensi is quickly getting a second command center, getting a fourth barracks, and getting a factory as well. No engineering bay on the way. <coughs> Does not need that one yet. I need a drink, my voice is kind of feeling a little bit weird. So does he have Stim finished up? He's getting a range now. Is he gonna wait for range and then Stim into that wall? Or is he just gonna go right here right now? With Minchel, with Gensei, you never quite know exactly what he is gonna do. You never quite know. Trisha though is keeping his calm, keeping his cool. Support bay finished up. Shit along the way. Double Reaver will be queued up very soon. More medics entering the middle. He's getting an engineering bay now. He's getting a machine shop as well. Might get a starboard soon. Yeah, Gensei is just scooting along. Supply luck at the moment because he forgot his supply depot. That might hurt him. Auto command center should open up supply space right now. So perhaps it was perfectly timed, actually. Perhaps perfectly timed. RGB, what are you saying? These guys know what they're doing. Do not doubt them. Although I do think you can sometimes doubt the almost seemingly mindless aggression that Gensei does display at times. He sometimes just goes too hard. It's cool to watch, though. It's cool to watch. It's exciting. But he really does go too hard sometimes. He has to slow down sometimes. He, he really does. So he's waiting on the side. He's trying to set up some very cool strategies and moves here. He wants to snipe the shield out of the air, flank it from the side, and he's gonna put one marine here right on the middle in the hopes that he will see the shuttle and then he can make a move with those marines here on the right. 
He needs the information. Zealots are moving. Zealots have speed on the way, but speed won't finish in time. Zealots have all split up all across the middle because Trisha apparently knows that Minchel really likes to go for those very sneaky moves. Genzi is going for a surround, but the surround not going too well. A lot of Marines are dying. Reavers are absolutely having a field day. Zealots have done a lot of work. Only a couple of Marines are left alive, but the double Reaver is still in the air. That's the most important part. The Marines are gonna be blown apart. Unless the Scarab does not explode, in which case they don't get blown apart. But there's a wide open hole into the base. We have Wraith in the air. Shuttle getting hunted down. Shuttle has to retreat back home to the, to the cannons. And unloads one Reaver. The other one gets taken down. Looks like the distraction tactics from Gansei were successful because he had double Wraith on the way from his double starport. So buying time on the middle, killing as many Zealots, losing a lot of Marines, but ultimately... The raids do save the day and prevent the shuttle drop from happening. But we have another shuttle drop already flying across the map. It's a shuttle. You're on the right with Reaver, Templar, and Zealot. And two more shuttles here on the middle in the front. Ready to pick up Reaver, Double Templar, and go for another drop at the exact same time. But Gensei is preparing his own early warning system. Marines spread about on the bottom and the top that are gonna give a small little call to HQ when a shuttle flies through. Wraiths aggressively flying back and forth, trying to find those shuttles, but the shuttles return back because the Dragoon saw the Wraiths. Quick reaction, both players are fighting for information control. Shuttles are coming in, Wraiths are right at the command center. Gonna fly in from both locations, same Oh, Gensei got fooled, got tricked, he got done dirty was focusing on the top shuttles, and from the bottom, snuck right through, arrives on the scene, kills the SCVs, and I think that's game. I think that's the game. 14 SCVs alive this far into the game, that pretty much is the end of the game. You never know though, you never know though. Maybe Gensei can pull off a miracle comeback. It just seems very unlikely. Trisha has an amazingly good storm dropping Protoss. His shell drops are really good. His coordination is supreme. Coloring out those sides, attention to detail. The information war is being won by Trisha by taking away those very important bits of vision on the side. Scans coming down here on Trisha, sees the front, but he doesn't know. There's already a shuttle here on the bottom side that is once again going to fly in while this drop is going to distract him from this shuttle. So it's going to be a frontal topside attack with this shuttle group right here in the choke. And another sneaky one coming from the bottom. Although this time around Gensei might, might just pay enough attention to see the bottom one coming in. Because the bottom one specifically got cleared out. Reaver in the front, very sneaky stuff, drop from the top, flies into the raids, but that's a lot of shuttles, he can't kill all of them. But loading on the scene, Templars are imp Gensei just does call the GG. He did see the bottom shuttle, to see the top shuttle. But there's just too much unloading and 10 minutes in, Gensei has to call GG. Trisha gets his home team of Trisha 458 one single win. The score is now 1-1. One one. And we're going to switch Gensei out and rotate a new player in. His name is Rabbit. Let me just find the replay first though. We're going to rotate in a Rabbit who's now going to take on Trisha in game number three. The two teams so far have both gotten one win with some very stellar early game play. We haven't seen a mid game or a late game yet, but that's often what happens on these fastest maps. Games can go very, very fast, specifically at this high level where small little leads and mistakes immediately translate into either losing or winning. Not always, but most of the time games are pretty fast. Pretty quick. So Trisha once again, 12 o'clock spawn location, Rabbit on the 11 o'clock. They're right next to each other. We have Trisha going for a mid-gate build order. Probe is entering the middle, We're gonna build gateways somewhere in the middle, in the exact middle. I'd say that the mid-gate strategy is only viable when you're on a middle spawn, but he kind of went pretty deep into the middle. 
he could have built his gateways right here and have his pylon timing be a little bit better. I think this is like another four or three seconds of extra time spent before building the pylon. But it is a middle spawn mid gate build order. It's a very viable strategy. But against players like Rabbit, who are very good at defending against these things, a mid gate strategy build order might not be the best choice, specifically because Rabbit is on a corner spawn. There's a lot of traveling time from the middle to that corner. Probably just as much traveling time as if Trisha had built his gateways right here at his nexus. So he didn't actually win out or gain any advantage from building those gateways on the middle. If Rabbit was on the middle spawn, then yes, he would have definitely reduced the traveling time by quite a significant bit. But from the middle to a corner, there's not that much reduction in traveling time. Maureen going to enter the middle. He might scout the gateways on the middle, might not. It really depends. Some players just go for sideways scouting. Some players first scout the middle and then go to sideways scouting. Rabbit goes for sideways scouting, but he's going to find the nexus there. And there's already two marines on the middle. And the zealots have not yet finished up. And I think Rabbit now knows he's fighting against the mid gate because there's nothing here in the main base. Which of course means that the gateways or whatever else he built is somewhere else on the map. And it just appears to be so on the middle. But we got four marines on double barracks. And a bunker coming up in the back. We have Zealous going to try to contest his choke point. But Rabbit did some good damage on one Zealot that was retreating back to his own barracks. He's got Stim on the way and Medic as well. The double Medic there queued up. We've got a bunker to micro around. Trisha started his cannon very far away from Rabbit's base though. Very far away from Rabbit's base. Probe is trying to sneak in. But Rabbit is doing a clean sweep over the bottom side. Probe scouts the back side. Sees the bunker. Sees the academy, sees the command center. Gonna try to snake his way out over the right side. Rabbit gonna try to cut him off. Zealots are splitting up. So he's trying to distract with the probe and he's gonna go in and attack with the zealots. He's gonna split up those zealots. Mm, getting a nexus there back at home, getting a forge as well. Firebats have finished up there for Rabbit. Things not looking too pretty for Trisha, but not for Rabbit either, because if Rabbit gets like Loses a couple of SCVs. Always oh, running them to safety. Really good move. Blocking two Zealots with the SCVs that ran to safety. Loses a Zealot. Zealots coming in from the other side there though. But Rabbit is just playing this really, really well. He's protecting his main very well. Even though the Zealots are kind of sneaking through again. Oh, what's this? Rabbit is going gonna to scoot for it. Got a fire bat there spawn. As he's running back and forth. Rabbit is going to try to break through that choke point. There's three Zealots, two cannons warping behind it. You're back at home, Firebat in the bunker. Looks like the bunker and the Firebat killed the Zealots. Did lose a couple of SCVs, he's running right through. And again, on top of the cannons, the Zealots did not buy enough time. Is this game just going to end like this? Trisha misread the situation and Rabbit just played it perfectly, getting on top of the cannon right as it finishes up. Medics in the back. Firebats are just blasting through. Probes are dead and gone. This is a game. Another very fast game. This is not even a cheese. This is a pure misread of the situation. Trisha was not expecting Rabbit to run for it. He was expecting Rabbit to stay back at home to defend against the Zealots. That was what Trisha was trying to do. Push the Zealots into Rabbit's base and force Rabbit to retreat. But Rabbit was like, nope. I'm just going to run for it. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go for the attack and try to end it. Right here, right now, before you have cannons to protect yourself, Rabbit has so much experience that he can read those he can read those very specific situations where he knows to just go for it. He's one of the few people who has played so much 1v1, he can tell exactly when to just go for it. And that was one of those moments where he had to pull the trigger and just run for the touchdown. So a couple of quick games, and this is uh, part number one. I'm going to continue on with part number two tomorrow when we rotate back in 458. He's going to take on Rabbit in game number four. See you soon. Have a great day.